All right, let's inspect this house. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so pretty much when I start at a home, I kind of walk up, get an overview of the place. You know, with this being wood siding, one of the main things I'm looking for is any kind of dry rot. Now, okay. any kind of wood destroying or organism, that's actually a pest inspector's area of expertise. Um, however, if I see any areas of excessive dry rot, you know, I'm gonna call it out, yep. make them aware of it, and hey, if you haven't gotten a pest inspection, you should get one or refer to the pest report. That way you kind of know what you're looking at. Okay. You know, I'm walking around, I'm looking at the exterior grade, you know, what's the grading like? Is there any gonna be any problems that right. are present where it looks like there's gonna be any moisture pooling, anything like that, okay. especially on raised foundations, you know? It's super important up here in the North County, you want that water grading away from your home. That's where a lot of your foundation problems come from is these expansive soils, they get wet and dry and heave, and that's where you get a lot of excessive settlement. So, ah, interesting. Okay. making our way around the home. So, again, looking, you know, condition of the paint, Coming up to a chimney like this, I'm looking, is there any excessive cracking, leaning, anything that could be a safety concern for this chimney? Uh, you know, what's the connection like to the home? Does it look like, you know, does it, is it flash cocked? Is there gonna be any problems with any moisture intrusion, anything like that? Right. Making my way over here to the utilities. You know, this is another important thing I like to always point out to my clients is, you know, where are your main shutoffs at? You know, in the event of emergency, hey, I smell gas. Where do I go to shut the gas off? You know, so you got your gas meter here. This is where you're going to shut that off. You know, we always recommend stick a gas wrench there and know where that's at. So you can always call SoCal Gas, but you want to make sure event of emergency, you can shut that off quick. You know, you're checking for, these are in good shape. They've been painted. You're checking if there's any excessive rust, anything like that. Okay. If I smell gas, that's a big one. I also will take a gas sniffer and usually run it on the line, wow. see if it's picking up any kind of leaks, anything like that. You know, making my way over the electrical panel. You know, electrical is a big one, obviously, when it comes to safety, hazards, fire concerns, anything like that. Electrical is kind of your main one. So with electrical panels, you know, I'm gonna usually open up the panel, identify how many service amps you got. So this one's a hundred amp, you know, pop the cover off, see if there's any signs of overheating, make sure everything's wired properly, Great. make sure you got proper wire size to the breaker size. That's another common thing you see. Okay. Again, if the wire's undersized, you can get a lot of overheating. Water heaters, you know, again, I'm checking if there's any leaks. I'm checking the data tag, identifying the age. You know, another big aspect of the home inspection is, you know, letting clients know kind of the age of their big system. So their water heaters, their furnaces, because there is kind of a good average life expectancy okay. for these systems. So a water heater is about 12 years is a good average life expectancy. So let's say it's five years old, you know, okay, that's not something I'm gonna have to worry about. But if it's 25 years old, which I'll run across, hey, just so you know, it's still working, but it's at the end of its life, you know, you're on borrowed time. You're looking at water conditioning systems. Now with water conditioning systems and irrigation systems, those are actually outside the scope of a standard home inspection. However, I just do a visual. Are there any signs of active leaks, anything like that? We're not going in depth testing of the system, but are there any active leaks, anything like that? And just identifying, hey, especially up here, hard water, Big that time. you have a water conditioning system. Big time. What are your thoughts on tankless versus traditional water heaters? So tankless are great, again, just because it's that on demand, you yeah. know, you're not having that annoying when you're showering and you run out of hot water you know the wife's in front of you she took the hour-long shower you come in and then you're out of hot water so yeah. the tankless are definitely a nice system and then again they're a lot more compact totally. so you can just mount them on the exterior of a home you know you don't have this big old tank filled with water they're tankless are definitely the way to go great cool so making our way around the home you know i'm looking at windows seeing if there's any cracks in the glass you know Especially on some of these older homes, if you have the original wood single pane windows, those yeah. love to crack. So you're always keeping an eye out. Is there any kind of cracks, anything like that? Making our way around, you know, identifying water shut off where the water is coming into the home, making sure you got vent screens and that the screens aren't damaged. That's a great way for rodents and any kind of pest intrusion to get under the home. Get critters in there, right? What, what, what's the most common uh, critter around here that uh, infests the bottom? Uh, Usually it's homes. rats, rats and rodents. Rats you know, rodents. I see that a lot, especially depending where you're at. You know, in town it's not as bad, but when you start getting to the outskirts of Paso, you're on property. Oh, yeah. You know, the, it's not if, it's how many rats you have. <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> especially if you don't have like a company like Bresden or someone like that performing maintenance. Okay. You know, you're checking AC system. You know, one of the main things I always check is, again, the age. Is it attached? to the concrete, oh, okay. which it's not, again, event of an earthquake, you know, out here in California. That's why you got water heater straps. They recommend, you know, securing it to the concrete. That way it's staying in place. Good to know, good to know. 
checking for you know any peeling paint i like to call this alligatoring where you kind of got the paint that's starting to peel right and chip you know and just making note of the paint condition overall this paint's in pretty good shape but you know i'll make a note of you know there's a little bit of peeling paint that's Al starting alligatoring to okay I I this house was painted i think within the last couple of years but there's a couple of spots that obviously need uh, a little bit of treatment it looks like and then the other thing too is i'm always looking is any kind of foliage especially on wood homes you don't want any kind of foliage up against that wood okay. siding it gets wet and it's also a great way for you know wood destroying organisms ah. to get into the home so we always recommend you want about a foot to 16 inches of clearance you know a lot of times people will do the vines all up and down their home right. it looks sweet <laughs> it's an awesome look however that's a great way to just rot out your siding over time gotcha. so and then usually i like to take a step back you know if the roof's safe to get on which most roofs able to access i'm getting up on the roof checking the condition of the roof um, if not then you just view it on a ladder from the eaves or from the ground this roof i can tell you just from looking out the ground is oh, in great shape okay. looks like it's been replaced probably within the last five years uh, so the other way you're checking roofs is when you're in the attic you're looking for any signs of moisture intrusion anything like that so if there is if you do identify something of concern on the roof you'll put that in your report and then ideally a roof inspector will come out yes and yes and that's why i like to use that kind of general doctor analogy because yeah. you know i tell people we're, we're generalists we're not you know a, a specialist in electrical or a specialist okay. we're generalists so you know we have you know a pretty good knowledge of a lot of different things yeah. but not as deep of a knowledge in every area That's so great we're identifying hey there's a problem with your roof you need to get a roof route here gotcha. there's a problem with your electrical it just helps save you time so you're calling just one person yep. and you're not wasting time calling every single trade because there's a lot of inspections where it doesn't need any further evaluation yeah. or maybe oh just a roofer so instead of having to line up a roofer an electrician you know an hvac tech you can just call me out and then I can kind of identify okay. that for you. Cool. Anything else you need to get evaluated. That's a great uh, analogy, I like that. So, yeah, and then again, just making my way around, you know, any kind of wood rot. Again, you know, this place is in pretty good shape, no visible signs of wood rot. You know, another thing we always recommend as part of an inspection, besides just what's wrong, safety upgrades, is any maintenance that needs to be done, mm -hmm. as well as what I like to call recommended improvement. So, okay. a perfect example on this home is gutters. Yep. So gutters are a great one, back to grading and drainage. Gutters are super important to help get that water kind of going away from the home, and that way it's grading and draining properly. So gutters are something, you know, when it's missing it, I'll put a note in the report of, hey, it doesn't have gutters, I'd recommend, you know, recommended improvement, just so the buyer okay. is kind of aware and you're educating them, besides just, hey, here's what's wrong, try to educate them about their Why do the well. older homes generally not have, because this is built in 1938, I think. Why do the older homes almost never have gutters on them? Or is that not true? So a lot of times what happens, uh, most of the time, and I can almost guarantee okay. that's what happened with this one, this oh. might have had gutters, but a lot of times when they redo the roof, okay. the gutters just never get put back on. Oh, that okay. happens a lot is, you know, they take the gutters off to do any fascia, the, you know, all the drip edge, do yeah. the roof, and then it just never gets put back on. Okay, good summary. So, yeah, yeah. Good explanation. And back to the front here, all right. Yeah, back to the front. And then, you know, after I do that exterior, the roof, you know, I like to start on the outside, get an idea of the home. And then that's where I kind of make my way into the home, you know, okay. checking everything on the inside and then usually saving the dirty parts, the attic and the crawl space are the last thing I do. Great. Well, let's go take a look at the interior. I love the, uh, the thorough explanation and uh, let's go look at the interior of the house. Perfect.